Most often we want to find a combined price index of a number of goods and we have to aggregate them together or add them together. Let's look at a simple example of this. So suppose we had three goods, three items, A, B and C. And we'll have year one and year two. And the price is A goes up from 50 to 53, B goes from 80 to 85, and C goes from 120 to 150. Now there are two simple ways of looking at the total inflation effect. We can look at the total cost in year one, which adds up to 250, if we add those, and the total cost in year two, which is 288. And so if we now take year one as 100, the index here is 288 over 250 times 100, and that comes to 115.2. And that seems a very reasonable thing to do. However, there's an alternative, which would be to look at the inflation or the index for each one separately and take the average. If we do that, 53 divided by 50 times 100 is 106. 85 divided by 80 is 106.25. And 150 divided by 120 is 125. So the items have separate indices, price indices, 106, 106 and a quarter, and 125. And we could then average those. So the average index in year two, if I add all of those up and divide by three, I get 112.4. So we can see actually we get slightly different answers. If I just take the total price in year one, the total price in year two, and work out the relative index, I find there's been 15% inflation. Whereas if I look at the separate indices for the three items and take the average inflation, it comes at 12%. So we need to be rather thoughtful about the way we do this. And in fact, there are more sophisticated ways of doing it which make us think about how much of each, each item is in the shopping basket. It looks as though item C is getting very expensive very quickly. But if very few of item C are bought, then we might want to downgrade that effect and take more account of these ones. And we'll do this next time with two different methods of getting a rather more uh, sophisticated price index for an aggregate of different goods. OK, so that's, that's all one, the bit with the cut. OK, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.